He said, shoot what you want to see, mm-hmm. not what you think other people want to see. And yeah. that is one of those, oh, put that in here and keep on going. Guys, what an absolute honor to have this man on the podcast today. Uh, welcome to the show, Mr. Ray Collins. Thanks for having me, Scotty. No worries at all. So, um, I want to sort of have a little bit of a chat about your background. Um, obviously, it's covered a lot in the Fish People documentary, which I recommend people definitely check out if they haven't yet, and I'll link it in the show notes. But what I'm sort of interested in is, I guess, like how you got that camera in your hand to begin with, but really those early sessions when you first went out and you started shooting the ocean, like kind of what were you shooting? How were you thinking about things? And was there a point that you got to or a moment or a session where you were like, you know, this is something that I, I really want to do with my life and this is something I actually can do as well? Well, it's uh, kind of, it's a great question. It's a, a bit to unpack. I guess the way it ca- the, the camera came into my hands from uh, an injury. Um, I was on compo wages and I uh, couldn't walk or drive because my knee was busted up. And so I caught a taxi into Harvey Norman uh, or local store of electronic goods yeah. and um, just picked a black camera because it looked professional and got back in the cab and took it home and took photos of my dog. That, that was my introduction to kind of photography, I guess. Um, and that was 2007. And from there, when I was able to start rehabbing my knee and I was um, allowed to go back in the ocean again, um, my first kind of inkling was to buy a water housing. So that's, that's what I did. And, and I remember the first times just feeling just the bulk of it and the weight of it. And just thinking like, wow, like I just spent thousands of dollars yeah. on my wages. <laughs> uh, number two, just like, like, how does this thing work? It just, it just seems so big and complicated and had all these buttons. And so I just put it all on auto and just swam around and push the button and, and like, cause you know, growing up around the ocean, you're pretty familiar with the waves and how they break and, and yeah. riding a bodyboard and a surfboard. You just, yeah. So being in that zone with the camera, I remember just like, this is pre GoPros too. So it's mm-hmm. like, uh, I remember just getting like a tube shot and I was just like, Oh wow. Like that looks like kind of something I would see somewhere like in, in a yeah. mag or, or whatever. Yeah, yeah. And then I remember like, going back out the same afternoon and like the, su- the sun was pretty low uh, near the, cause we've got a big mountain range called the great dividing range or the escarpment, but the sun was pretty low on that. And I remembered this, how different it looked middle of the day to like five 30 in the afternoon. And, uh, and I was like, Oh, that, that seems like light is such a uh, kind of determining factor in the photos. So yeah, um, yeah there was no big plans. Eh? It was just, um, just swim around and, and kind of, I don't know, have a hobby to practice and, um, yeah, just shoot my mate surfing. Yeah, 100%. Was there an image or something? Was there a, a moment? Like, I remember early kind of when I was, like, started, like, taking photos, I, like, distinctly remember, like, one photo that I took where I was just, like, you know, kind of like, holy shit, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, was there kind of anything like that for you or was it sort of just a series of, of progression? Um, it progressed real quick um, mm. and it was, like, kind of just dumb luck because I was still shooting auto on JPEG. Yep. Yeah, And I shot this photo of my friend, Dylan Robertson, who's still my good mate. And I still travel with him now. And uh, it was, it was just him standing in a huge tube, just doing yeah. peace on like a, like an eight, 10 foot barrel. Yeah. And uh, I remember sending it to surfing life and they were, they were like real stoked. They're yeah. like, Oh, do you have the roar or anything? And I was just like, what is that? <laughs> and yeah. Uh, so yeah, my, one of my mates standing in a huge tube with his hands above his head, that was that was definitely a turning moment. It was my first published image mm. and um, I learned how, what Roar is after that. And yep. um, yeah. And then started, I don't know, getting more shots published and some cover shots really early mm-hmm. in the, in the piece and just thought, well, this is working. Like I didn't have, yeah, I didn't have any real plan, but this was pulling me in rather than yep. me chasing something. So yeah. I just kept doing it. I kind of gave up uh, bodyboarding and surfing and just swam for a couple of years and just yeah. got, used to how the camera works. Yep, 100%. And was that something that was interesting to you, like learning the the actual specifics of the camera? Because I know, like, you know, people can be different. Sometimes, like you said, you're shooting in auto, you know, you're just seeing images. But then when you found out, well, this is how a camera works and I can start to manipulate certain aspects on it, did that become like kind of a, a new fascination or? It, it definitely did down the line. In that initial phase, it was just like, I just remember reading some surf photographer's forum and it was just like, 
1000 shutter speed, yep. f6.3, ISO 100. And I was like, fuck, that's all I need to do. Yep. Fish eye, yep. just don't, yep. what, is, what is anything? And yep. I was like, just throw yourself in the spot and just keep doing it. And the rest will kind of unfold. But that mm. that journey of learning and understanding and the fine tuning, that, that was a, a long, slow, like I really love that part of yep. things. And I remember that, that, started maybe a year down the track that would yeah because it was like a flash in the pan everything was happening quickly yeah, and it was yeah. just like and it, we had, it was like one of the best years of swell we'd ever had too and one of my local reefs yeah. sometimes it break for months and it was it was it was like 20 good days in a month and it was, mm-hmm. it was just incredible so um it was a, a baptism of, of fire yeah. really just get yeah. in the spot and push the button yeah, for sure, for sure. Now, I feel like you've almost created your own subgenre of like ocean photography. That's like uniquely yours. And I guess what I mean by that is um, when people are running around taking photos of shore break now, they're kind of like, oh, that's a, you know, I'm taking a Clark Little shot. Or they might look at someone and reference like the actual photographer who's kind of created it. And I feel like, especially in that world of, um, you know, the, the waves almost like emulating mountains and, you know, some of that more artistic work, I feel like that that's, something now where people, if they take something like that, they're like, that's a Ray Collins shot. So um, hmm. how does that sit with you? How does that feel? And then I guess also on top of that, how did that style sort of grow? You know what I mean? Like if I, I yeah, it's a long winded question, but even if I look at your two books, right? Like the first book found at sea has a lot more images of surfers and waves and that kind of thing. And then water and light is obviously a much more artistic play with the ocean. So how did that kind of evolve for you? It's a huge compliment. Thank you. Um, that is, yeah, it's crazy to think that um, some people see an image and think of like someone or my work or, or whatever. Like it's, I don't know, it makes me feel like super stoked, a little bit uncomfortable. Um, <laughs> but, yeah, but it's it's cool. It's real yeah. cool that if I, well, to break it down, it took ages to get to understand that that was a good thing because I used to see, I, I was, having an idea in my mind. So I'd go to a place and and just show up and just kind of be there at first light and shoot and shoot and shoot. And then like my work would be like, it would start to spread out and people would see it. And then like, there'd be like two or three people there and it'd be like, so cool. And then like, there'd be 20 people in the water. And it was just like, Oh, it kind of threw me into a bit of a spiral, but my psychologist at the time was just like, you, once you reframe this and see it as your sphere of influence rather than like people copying you mm-hmm. like that that is it's a, a gift you're giving to people like in this small like time it's like I'm not, no one's curing cancer or anything but yeah, yeah, yeah. it's it's just a it's a thing you've given to the world and the world is taking that receiving it and and adapting and growing it in their own way and that's mm-hmm. I don't know it's, it's real beautiful um yeah. when I think of it in hindsight now but it, it kind of rocked me a little for a little while but i mean it's real easy to uh, copy something but it's kind of hard to think of something and, and execute it from from scratch but yeah man whatever like we're all just having fun in the ocean and uh and yeah i'm, I'm kind of just stoked to that i have the chance to do it so yeah yeah man no that's it's just it's amazing i, I don't know if i question then no yeah i think you definitely did but it's it's just yeah it's definitely one of those things i've noticed through my um you know my time over the last sort of six years or so since i've been photographing and you know talking to a lot of people through you know going to different um you know different sessions in the water that kind of thing and it's just like yeah it's become this thing that that's a ray collins shot it's an amazing thing to have um you know to have created yeah awesome cool that's um cool yeah so if people have seen any of the footage, um, say from fish people, for example, or just like looking at the photos that you take, you put yourself in some pretty precarious situations in terms of like in the water. Now, you mentioned beforehand, obviously you had some history with bodyboarding, so you've probably been around waves and been used to that before. But some of the scenarios you put yourself in, like I've been to some places where like I know that you've shot and the last thing I want to be doing is jumping off the rocks into the water in those situations. So. Sure. Um, I guess my main question with it is there's physical preparation that comes with that, which is possibly comes from your own fitness and your bodyboarding, that kind of thing. But what's your, what's your mindset kind of stuff? Is there any mindset, mental stuff that you do? Cause when you're photographing, you have to be in a, be in the moment, be in a situation, you know what I mean? You have to be in there in the first place, but then when a moment happens, you're looking at it, you're composing a shot, you're pressing a shutter. Like there's so many things that you have to be present with. 
um, that I have to think requires some kind of mindset work? I I could almost say like it's 90% mindset, to be honest. And uh, I get so scared. I get absolutely just terrified uh, all the time. Mm -hmm. But I, I don't know, you just, you do it. And then once you have done it, then it's like, oh, okay. And it helps you visualize. Um, there's times where it's just like, I've just, just, undone my wetsuit and got back in the car and just went, nah, like that's yeah. nah. Like what, what, what is it for? Like, is it worth whatever? Yeah. But um, yeah. So basically like, I guess I'll know the swells coming or I'm traveling to find us the swell. Um, I'll just be like fully visualizing and just breathing a lot and um, just trying to harness the fear and turn it into excitement, I guess, um, cause it comes from the same kind of part of your brain and your, uh, physiological system. So, yeah. um, just recognizing it and, um, understanding that it's kind of normal to feel that and, um, still like knowing your limits and, um, like if, if in doubt, not going out, but, uh, just being prepared for the worst possible scenario that mm. is the way to do it like yeah. one of, i just remember one day just there's, there's a with a lot of the waves i shoot they come from really deep water to really shallow water really quickly so the wave will stand right up and jack and throw and, and do all this crazy stuff mm. and it's pretty easy to find the line of what, how close you can get because of the sudden like, change in bathymetry but when it's big like it, it can still push you into the shallow parts mm. and uh that, that trying to stay on that line like that line between like order and chaos is where i don't know that's when you're so present and you're so like just aware of everything and mm. i don't know that just feels like as as much as the photo is that feeling for me i don't know like you don't really, we don't get to do that much in our lives in, in 2022. We, we don't get to like be kind of scared and be alert and frightened. Like, you know, food, we buy food from the shops, we drive everywhere or whatever, you know, in any yeah. story. But yeah. Uh, yeah. it's raw and, and it's yep. kind of primal. And um, yeah, it's, I, I reckon it's almost like watching fire, just watching waves do crazy things from so close. It's just, you can't look away. Yeah. So Yeah. I hope I didn't blab too much then, but uh, yeah, that's, no, that's that's awesome, man. That's unreal. Yeah. So no, I've never, I've never really been that fit. Hey, like, it's just like okay. only in the last couple of, um, like in the last couple of years, I've concentrated more on fitness. But it's more like just I don't know, just doing it. <laughs> Have you done like kind of sort of breath stuff or any of the you know like hold down kind of training and? Yeah, I've done breathing enhancement training with uh, Nan Baldwin and um, like he'll yeah. simulate, you know, big wipeouts and put a bag yeah. on your head and t toss you around and run with a leg rope and you have to do all these drills. And yeah. so I've done that for a few years and that that's helped a lot. But um, yeah, I guess just, just trying it and progressing and um, just not biting off more than you can chew <laughs> each yeah. time you progress. Yeah, for sure. For sure. So with the waves that you shoot, like those kind of like bomby sort of situations, backwash style situations, like it's a bit unpredictable. So how much are you envisaging a shot maybe that you want to get and chasing that? Or how much are you sort of just reacting to the situation? Like, you know, taking your artistic eye and saying, well, this is what the conditions are like at the moment. I'm going to adapt to what's here. Oh, it's both. Eh? For years, yeah. it was trying to kind of force my will onto the situation yep. and then I learned like the more you kind of surrender to it the more like kind of fun it is you, yep. you might get something you might not but you might yeah. get something that unique that you have no plan on just because you paid attention to a different part of the area where you're shooting yeah um, so I find well it's hard man like I've shot waves for a job for over a decade right yeah and it is do you keep showing up and trying to make things look different, feel different, seem different for mm -hmm. your own self and for your audience or yeah. the, whoever, for sure. clients, yeah. customers yeah. who buy your books, fans, yeah. I don't know. Keep doing that is hard. Mm. It's really, really hard. And there's some moments where you don't pick up a camera for three months and you don't even identify with photography or as a, or as a photographer. And then there's other times where you don't, you're, you're non-stop shooting 
twice a day for weeks and then editing and editing and editing. So I don't know. I used to try and I used to get super bummed out when that I would just go through one of those things, but it's like, I'm, I'm a pioneer of what I'm doing. So there's no blueprint to follow. I've just got to ride these cycles and troughs and ups and downs as I go. Yeah. And, uh, but the way it's helped me is to turn up at the ocean usually just put a lens on without like putting too much thought into it and just imagining I've never done it before. Mm. Imagine it's the first time I'm doing it or it's yeah, yeah, that basically. Mm. And uh, that, that helps progress and it helps stay focused. And uh, yeah, that's, that's kind of how I've framed it in the last probably four years or five years. Yeah, man. That's amazing. That's a really good insight. Yeah. So when you're, um, when you go for one of these sessions, right? It's a, like it's a good day. You get the light comes together, the conditions come together, and you're shooting these incredible moments that happen, like these fleeting moments in time. So you're shooting them at like you know a thousand of a second, whatever it is. And there's multiple frames. You come in from a session, and like let's say for example, you've got like a thousand photos that you shot in a session. For example, what is it that you're then looking for? What's the what's the thing about an image for you that's like okay, that's the one that I'm gonna either, you know, work on or publish, you know, there's 10 frames in a shot. Like, what are you kind of looking for? Okay. So I've just swam for four hours and I've come in and I have 500 photos. Mm -hmm. I'll probably not really, unless I have to do it, I'll probably not look at them for a day or so. But what I'll do is I'll look at them on my camera and I'll just click, I'll scroll slowly and just lock ones that, subconsciously there's something about it Mm -hmm. and I won't put too much thought into it because often it's not something that jumps out at you and says, this is the image. This Mm. is the one like crazy cover, whatever. Yeah. 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 It's just like, Oh, that's weird. Click like lock it and then Mm -hmm. get to all the way to the end then just delete everything. And then out of the 500 shots, I might have like 60 good, like locked ones. And then, and then that will just be like, you know, um, I'll look at them a bit closer and, and see what they look like on the screen. Um, yeah, so it, it is, I work, I am rewarded for the work. Mm-hmm. With the reward, I put in a bank and then I withdraw that as time goes on. So yep. I might not check those images out. I might look at them in three months. I might, oh, wow. look, okay. them, might look at them that night. Mm. Um, but I know that because I've got folders that are just un unfinished uh mm. unprocessed just things that are like oh when i when i'm when i get one of those creative spurts um i'll i will go through that folder and, and see what's see what happened in the past that yep. i didn't really pay attention to at the time yeah. um and because i'm ready to accept it um mm. yeah so i make it it's, it's like different processes in a, yeah. and they're almost like totally separate so are there moments but when you just like you know you just know You've just got like some banger moment and you're just like yeah. kind of almost in a rush to get home and, and load yeah. it up. hundred <laughs> percent. Yeah. Yeah. You just, you can't believe it. You just yeah. like, like that doesn't even look real or yeah. how is water shaped like that? Or yeah. I've seen the ocean do that before. Things yeah. like that. I'm actually getting goosebumps. Not, not yeah. kidding. Like I'm actually yeah. getting goosebumps. But, uh, but yeah. even then in that situation, like that's really interesting. Do you still have to find that then you can kind of like froth out a bit on your own, but do you still give it some space as far as just attaching like emotion to it before thinking about publishing something? Do you have to kind of sit there and think like, this is unreal, get excited about it, but then give it a bit of time to go back to it just to uh, <laughs> make just sure? Just depends, eh? Yeah. yeah. No, there's no rules, eh? Just, yeah. uh, if I'm just- so I find that sometimes I just, throw, I just get so excited, I just throw it up and it's just like, you just want to share it. Like, yeah, yeah, no, for sure. Yeah. But the thing with that is, is, as well as like a lot of people um, are focused on the ocean and that, that will give them- kind of an indication of how the day was where you were at that time yes so sometimes that can be detrimental because it it might be a three-day swell and yeah i don't know it's yeah Yeah. so it's i hate having to be like not like secretive or anything but yeah sometimes i do and and sometimes i don't and but yeah there's just so much stuff to think about and you know it's just mainly social media it's mainly just social yeah that's just has changed the way that's definitely changed the connection I have with photography for sure. Mm. And it's not all good and it's not all bad. There's yep. heaps of positive, heaps and heaps and heaps of positive. Mm. Imagine taking a photo when I first got my camera and, yep. and pressing a button 
and a kid in New York will see it. Also yep. a kid in, in Brazil, also mm. like a, a full grown man in the middle of Texas and, and 500,000 other people in, in an instant, like it's, it's unheard of. Yeah. And that's, that is incredible. That's an incredible mm. thing that social media has given us, but we've also given it a lot of permission to have say in our lives in our day-to-day lives. And it's, yeah. it's grown into something we didn't sign up for. I feel. Yep. And, uh, um, yeah, that's, yeah. It's a double-edged sword and I try to, sorry. That's right. A bit of a side note. Does that play into your, I'm intrigued by that. Does that play into your mindset at all? Because the social media thing, as I said before, like went referring to people seeing shots and like identifying it as like something that you've kind of created. Um, Along with that comes a lot of emulation, which I'm sure that you're aware of. Like I've like seen it a lot. There's a lot of people that have, can afford cameras now that are going out with housings and trying to take photos that essentially look similar to stuff that you've taken. So does that, because of that social media world and because so many more people are exposed to it, does that have any um, implications with you, like in your own creation? Do you ever feel like any pressure to be creating anything new or is it always just something that you're like, I'm just going to create what I create and what I feel and then like, everything's going to be fine? It's all of those things. It's, you you know, you're comparing, we, we, we're comparing ourselves to people's highlight reels too and it's mm. like, I don't know. It, it it definitely in the last like two years, it's like bummed me out more than it's got me excited. Before that, it was like super exciting, but not because of other people. Like like you mm. mentioned, that, that's kind of not that's not really an issue anymore. Like like yep. I said, it was um, many years ago, mm-hmm. but now I just try to um, yeah, just try to do what feels right and like trying to let my uh, I don't know my creativity be my guide. It sounds so like wanky, but uh, oh, yeah. It's still, then you're thinking about the algorithm or will it do well? Like, will it, you know, my opinions have gone down or something, whatever, whatever the things are. And then you like start to think about yourself and you're just like, oh, whoa, like that's not real. Like none of that's real. I made this thing and I had this great time. Why would I feel shit about it? Like, yeah. so yeah, it's, it's a double-edged sword, but one of the edges is really fine and sharp. So yeah. Yeah. Are you ever fascinated just when we're talking about like those moments that you're looking for, are you ever like fascinated about what's happening? Not only when you're not there, but maybe even like, I think about it a lot, like, cause I shoot a lot of backwash about like what's happening at nighttime when you can't even see, (laughs) I think there must be so many moments that just happen. And I think that's what keeps me excited about going back all the time. Cause when you're shooting certain things to have a window of morning light and to have conditions come together, at that same time in that window is pretty rare in the scheme of things. And so it just fascinates me sometimes what's happening when you can't see. What's there. Not, not only does everything have to be like lined up and perfect, but mm. then the light also has to be good and yeah. it must happen. It must happen a lot in the other 23 hours of the time that we're yeah, right. <laughs> for sure. Whereabouts do you live? In Newcastle. Oh, awesome. Oh, yeah. I love Newcastle. Yeah. Yeah. So there's like, yeah, there's a few spots around here where I kind of go and like, I love chasing like backwash, that kind of thing. And, um, but the amount of times that you go out and the tides like you know like maybe an hour away from being perfect for it but like that's when the good light is and it's just like you know you just think there must be so many times when it's just going crazy and you're not there or like no one can see it <laughs> well, or I, of, I often think about like the decades gone by like the things that it must have done or, or whatever and no one was around to see it or capture it or or think about it and yeah like some fishermen tell me like oh, what are you doing swimming at, at this place? Like, uh, you, you're mad or whatever. And they're like, yeah. we, we call it bum, we call it broken bum bay because like when we try to go past this area, which is all cliffs for a couple of kilometres, yeah. the reverb just sends it through our boat and we have to go out wide and it's like, what are yeah. you doing swimming there? And I'm like, yeah. imagine the stuff that you guys have seen when you're down here getting like yeah. rattled around. But um, Totally, yeah. yeah. Yeah, cool. On the other side of that, like we've talked about, like, I guess the images that you're sort of getting out there, but on the other side of that coin, the moments have been out there for you. Like we've just talked about moments must exist that no one sees, but there's also moments that exist that only you see. And you probably not, you know, there's probably moments that you miss with the camera, but you experience in real life, or there might just be times when you're just out there immersed in the moment. How's that side of it for you as far as just just being there and maybe like witnessing some things that just never make it to your camera. I love the ocean, man. I love it. I, I loved it before 2007. Like, yeah, uh, it's, it's all I've ever known. It's, it's been my like full 
guiding light. Like I lost my father when I was young and, and I feel like the ocean kind of was my other parent, you know, it was like my mum, and then, and then the, all the other things I learned from going to the beach, I feel like, yeah. So all, all of those things make life worth living yeah. regardless of capturing them or not. It's like, it's my place. It's, it's where I feel home. And, uh, and that's, that's going to be that way for the rest of my life, regardless yeah. of uh, if I'm riding an air mat or a knee board or having a GoPro yeah. or an iPhone or, or whatever. But yeah, some of those moments, as you know, from, from your own journey, like mm in and around the water yeah it's un it's indescribable mm. and uh and with the camera the best stuff i've ever seen i didn't shoot yeah <laughs> i've yeah. seen like i was thinking <laughs> 50 foot high peacock tail yeah. <laughs> weird explosions that didn't but separate then they all just fell back like a olympic diver into like a little tiny little splash and i'm yep. just going like what was that? And yeah. just sitting there like with the camera pointed down in my mouth, open catching flies. Yeah. 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 It's amazing when that sort of stuff happens. <laughs> yeah. Like if you're just like shooting backwash and you just kind of like, you look away for a second or like you miss a moment because you've got to be so onto it. But I've just kind of had to take the approach when like I'm, you miss a moment that you've experienced it in time. And I've just taken this more esoteric approach. I'm like that one, just that one wasn't meant for me to capture, but it was just to be here like in the moment because <laughs> early on I'd just get so frustrated if I'd miss a shot. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's, that's reframing it, isn't it? Yeah. Like that's, that's how, that's how we adapt, but yeah. you know what stoke is, right? You know, you feel mm. stoked. Yeah. That's, that's you taking that experience in the ocean with mm. you when you leave yes. and having that with you. So yeah, yeah that makes you stoked to yep. <laughs> feel and see and experience. And, and I don't know, you know what it's like when, like two waves hit each other and you're on the crest of those two waves as well. It's it's like yeah. you're on a roller coaster or you're in an elevator that's dropping really quick or all of those yeah. things at once and the sounds and sights and yeah. it's a lot to take in. It's a, it's a visual overload, a, a sensory overload and uh, yeah, actually real keen to <laughs> get yeah. it up. Yeah. I haven't been, haven't, haven't shot a photo. What month is it? November. I haven't shot a photo of a wave. Uh, probably four months yeah wow maybe yeah maybe four months yeah um, i've been surfing heaps yeah. and i've been swimming in the pool because i'm uh thinking about trying out to be a professional lifeguard to oh, kind of wow. give back to the community because i got so yeah. much free time and you know photography's given me a great life and yeah and um so yeah i've just been swimming probably between two and three kilometers in a pool every day and uh staring at a black line on the bottom of the pool and uh yep. <laughs> I think even me stoked. It's been yep. just meditative and um, awesome. Yeah, but I'm not bummed because I know that photography will pop back up and I'll yep. be hungry and chase it and all of that again. So yeah, yeah, and that's a really nice segue into. Um, it'd be cool if we could discuss some of the commercial aspects of like your career because it's pretty fascinating in this day and age. Like a lot of a lot of people you talk to would be like, you know, it's so hard to make a career out of photography, or you've got to do something else you know what i mean like you can take photos of waves but you probably have to have a wedding photography business on the side or etc etc you've created this thing that a lot of people maybe see as you know aspirational but maybe not even like possible for them like can you talk us through maybe how that even began and then like how that like exists for you now yeah absolute dumb luck <laughs> i'm not a business person yep. um i don't chase i don't I, I don't do anything, man. I, I'm, I don't really, tr I haven't really ever tried historically or anything in any part of my life. I feel a bit like ashamed about that, but <laughs> I just get emails and then uh, negotiate with whatever companies. Um, yeah. Obviously my wife is amazing because I'm just, airy fairy up in the clouds like a dreamer like we can do all these cool things let's go and see the world let's just mm -hmm. like you know be in nature and, and my wife is like on the ground planted spreadsheets mm -hmm. uh like just thinking of i don't know whatever stuff yeah. her however her brain works so yeah. like I, I feel like i pull her up 
and show her like how I live and how you can see and how, how the world can look. And she grounds me and she's like, no, that can be cool, but you need to get this stuff in order. So without her, um, I would have missed a lot of good opportunities because like my emails will go to like 200 or they used to go to like yeah. explode. And, and I would, I, I'm sure I missed yeah. heaps of opportunities, but that's, you know, part of life. Hmm. But so to answer your question, um, <laughs> companies just email me and ask if they can use uh, some images that they've seen somewhere um, and how they go about that. And I'll just um, ask them what their needs are mm -hmm. um, and kind of work out a, a price. Uh, I use a uh, software called photo quote, which is F O T O quote, which is mm -hmm. really good. Um, that way, if say a luxury goods company um, contacts you or an electronics company um, says, oh, look, we want three billboards in Asia, but we're going to use it for six months in Europe on TV commercials and um, on the web. But yep. we're also having two trade shows in Germany and we need it for that as well for four years. And it's like, uh, <laughs> how old is that yeah. price? The yeah. photo quite helps a lot. So okay. cool. um, I'd recommend that for anyone who is getting asked to yep. quote prices for people um, because yeah. that has been an absolute godsend. It's mm -hmm. a couple hundred bucks, but if you get one license from it, it'll pay itself off a hundred times in one go. Yeah. So um, yeah, like I said, man, yeah. I'm, I'm not a business person. I just love um, being at the beach and mm. uh, all this other stuff has just made me the luckiest person in the world. I can't believe it. I can't believe that. My wife is a uni student and we bought a house like from photography. Like that is incredible. Like that's amazing. Incredible. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's, I'm just so blessed. I'm so just lucky to have lived the life I've lived and to be where I am um, as a person and as an artist because, uh, yeah, it's, it's yeah. just, it's nuts, man. So yeah, it's been. It's so happened. I guess, yeah. The premise of that is so it's kind of like photos first, and then there you're approached. Like after that, you've sort of haven't really had to shoot with anything else in mind other than your own artwork. I think specialising in a field mm -hmm. makes uh, makes it easier. And then, but no, I've, I've definitely shot jobs for people who want that feel or that look that they've seen so okay. um yeah so um i've definitely done assignments for people but um a lot of the imagery the, the licensing of the imagery is um stuff that i either have on my website or they've seen online or, yep. or, or wherever um yep. or they have or they ask do you have we're looking for you know a big blue thingo with kind of clouds at you know or whatever do you have something that fits this mm. brief yep. and i'll go scouring through you know yeah. old hard drives or just sessions yeah. that I remember or, or whatever because yeah. Uh, yeah yeah as we were talking about earlier like having the sort of the guts to go after that particular style and work through whatever that initial fear was to create this thing that you're doing is like I guess this is the testament to it now isn't it like you've become known for that style of thing and then you've you worked out there because it speaks for itself so like it's that's a fascinating way to like hear about it that because that's purely just the work is the thing that speaks for itself and has attracted people into to you from that it's definitely better than coal mining too yeah <laughs> how it's worked is with, with my wife we've been married for we've been together for like 11 years in two days yep. um, i met her for an award called follow the light award which is yep. um surfing magazine yep. in the states she's american yep. so she moved here and i feel like i helped support her when she was getting on her feet mm -hmm. and that lasted for however long she got on her feet. And then I said, like, I think it's time to not work anymore and just try and make it uh, in just making images. And uh, so she kind of supported us in that time yeah. and that worked. So then she was like, well, I want to upgrade my uh, skill set." So she went to university and mm -hmm. then I, helped us and yep. now she's got a great job and and awesome. like we're just we're just kind of always you know that has nothing to do with any of your questions but that is that's how that's how it's kind of been uh possible as well yeah. and, and like i'm i'm not scared of it all ending today and working like i'm not okay. worried about that because that's mm -hmm. what i was doing anyway yep. and uh, 
and I'll still take photos because it's like I'll, I love doing it. Like, yeah. I love doing it. Yeah. Yeah. On that commercial stuff. So those things that have come to you, is there any, like a couple of them that have stood out? I've followed your stuff over time and seen you like photos above stations in Los Angeles or like on billboards in New York or speaking in like Russia during COVID. Like, is there, is there anything that's kind of really sort of like, you know, for you has been just kind of like, you know, wow. You know how weird that is to hear all that stuff? Like, it's like, I, I don't feel like I'm, that that's happened to me. It's mm. like, you go through it and then you forget about it. And it's like when it's brought up or when you get a memory on your phone or whatever, it's just like, whoa, that, that happened. Yeah. That actually happened. That is insane. Yeah. Um, what stood out? All of those things you said have stood out. Um, you know what else has stood out? Being asked to go and speak at my school. Yeah. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah, yeah, nice. Awesome. Actually, what I wanted to do is just have a bit of a behind the scenes like of an image that I'm a bit of a fan of. So that one right behind your head, Portal. Um, can you... Um, that one? Yeah, right there. Yeah. yeah. Can you give us like a little bit of a, a story behind it? To me, that has to be one of those ones I was talking about before where like you would have had to be running home to like look at that in the camera if you noticed it happen. But... That, that was one of a handful of times where I've gone, that was the shot in, yeah. in, in the hundreds of thousands i don't know if there's millions in the all of photos i've ever taken in the handful of times that's one of the times where i've gone i think that was the shot and uh <laughs> i was with my friend jason it was pretty early on maybe 2015 maybe a bit earlier maybe 2013 anyway i remember just this wave it was a kind of, sort of normal day like nothing nothing really that interesting and then this wave just came and it just made this perfect circle in front of us. And we were just like, was that really strange? And then like, I go like, oh my God, I've never seen a photo like on the back of my housing to my friend. Like I've never seen a photo like this before in my life. And it was an older housing. So I couldn't really like zoom in or check the uh, sharpness of it. And I'm like, I think that's like one of the weirdest or maybe just the most unique photos I've ever taken. And then like, I was like, I'm done. Let's do you want to go in? And we just went in and I remember just like quickly unbuckling the clips and like zooming in and going, that's sharp. Like, whoa, like, yeah, yeah. <sighs> that was, yeah. that was one of those times. Um, yeah. Yeah, I, yeah, nice. I just revisited that. I haven't thought about that. Yeah. Me, so. <laughs> that's cool. Yeah. I've got to ring my friend, Jason. He's a good, good fella. Yeah. Yeah. That moment. That. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That's unreal. Cool. Um, a little bit of a diversion, but I'm interested. You've kind of dabbled, um, and maybe more than dabbled, I'm not sure, in the NFT space. What's your thoughts on it? I guess like as someone who is um, you know, like you sell images for print, obviously sell images commercially, like as as someone who's making their living through, you know, the photography as we've talked about that you love, like the photos of the waves, like where do you see the world going in regards to that? And is that something people should be definitely paying attention to? Well, I have no idea. So okay. I can't give any, uh, any kind of advice about it. Okay. I just, um, figured it looked pretty exciting. So I dabbled my toes in it and, um, it's been kind of rewarding, I guess. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah. Um, I never invested too much time, thought or energy into it. Um, okay. I'm just not sure about it. Mm -hmm. I don't know how it works and, uh, but other people who uh, I respect have said that I should try it and, and things people have helped me facilitate like things with it. So yep. um, yeah, I, I have a digital wallet. I haven't checked it for, I don't remember. Yep. So I heard there's been crashes and rises and falls, but yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah it's not a great world right now. I don't think. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, yeah. I mean, I've, yeah, I've got a couple of ether and some, a little bit of Bitcoin or whatever. And it's just mm -hmm. like, okay, well, um, I, when I say a little bit of Bitcoin, I don't mean a, yes. a full yes. coin or anything. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> whether, that, whether that's worth a million dollars yeah. or yeah. one cent, I, I don't know. Yeah. But um, yeah, I mean, that's just something that, it could be play money down the track. It could, yeah. I haven't really thought about That's it. But cool. I thought, well, this could be a great chance. I would hate to miss out if this was um, the future of things or if it is the future of things. So, um, yeah. yeah, we always need to evolve. And um, mm -hmm. that was a part of my thinking in entering that space. For sure. I guess as a little side note off that then from the creative point of view, the NFT stuff that you did do was a lot of that moving imagery, if you like, like the stuff that you did. So how did that come? Yeah, how did that come about? Um, 
Um, Armand, my mm. co-creator, he is a, an awesome animator and he, he does work for like um, Time Magazine and NASA. NASA have him like helping do cinemagraphs on, on space. Like they've opened up their kind of catalogue of images for him and uh, he's really good at what he does and yeah. he just overlays single images to um, make it move in an infinite loop and he contacted me on email out of the blue like all the other stuff that ever happens to me and um yeah just said hey what do you think of this and I was like that's incredible like do more yep. and then we just kind of got interest from because they've been they've been a, a great thing for us because mm. like as you have alluded my, my I feel my work is kind of unique and so is his work. And when you put it together, it's like mm. it's something else. It's something yeah. that neither of us could have imagined yep. um, by ourselves. So together, mm. it's like it's more than the sum of its parts. And yeah. so we've worked together for, yeah, over a decade. And, and yeah, I've hung out with him in uh, in Rotterdam and, and, yeah. and met his partner. And just, yeah, he's become a good friend and yep. still working, still licensing and still doing stuff now. Yeah. I imagine that gives you another like kind of, commercial opportunity i suppose as well whether it's to be found or whether to seek it out but like having that those images that kind of have that effect of moving i imagine would be like attractive for certain signage certain like you know um, totally. displays yeah, yeah. yeah well, it's been used uh, i'm not allowed to say but it's been used on like uh certain manufacturers mobile phones and uh mm. like laptop screens and it's it's uh we're talking right now with the manufacturer about um yeah on tvs and stuff so yeah yeah it's, it's been great yeah that's unreal man that's amazing um has there been anyone like in your journey and it doesn't necessarily have to be photographers as far as just inspiration if there is any photographers that you've kind of looked at along the way if it's not that like any form of art but something that's kind of inspired your journey that's a great question There's so many good photographers out there and a lot of them have played uh, parts along the way. Um, so early on, definitely like people in the surf photography community, I, I looked up to. Mm -hmm. um, and then the more I ingested, the more I found that I could be subconsciously influenced. Yep. Yep. So I kind of tried to minimise any um, uh, intake of, yep. of other people, other creative people's work because that's their journey and they're doing their thing and, and yep. it's amazing and I don't want to borrow that and insert it into my own stuff. Mm -hmm. So I guess like maybe not, maybe not really photographers as much. Um, actually, one photographer who has been hugely helpful is a photographer called Tim Flack, uh, F-L-A-C-H. Um, mm -hmm. And I met him in a small seaside German town called Zingst. We were there for um, a photo um, like um, expo over a few days where um, there was three or four photographers and we spoke to people and showed our work and we did all these great workshops and stuff. And the access I had to him, he and I would ride around on push bikes and um, buy ice creams and just be German tourists. It was, it was amazing. And he is an incredibly intelligent human being. He, um, yeah, he works with David Attenborough and he's um, works with like um, neuroscientists who uh, help map the brain and, and how your sight is interpreted and the patterns that you notice as a person and why things are pleasing and mm. uh, why famous artists work resonates because of certain uh, overlapping features that so many you know, great brilliant painters and even in music it's like oh it's it's so much information but yeah he's been helpful tim flack yeah. he's been inspirational even though i spent 48 hours with him or three or four days or i can't remember but that left an imprint on, on me, mm. which is pretty incredible because you don't know that that's going to happen when you're going somewhere. You, you yep. just have to be kind of willing and open. And, and um, yeah, so he's he's been hugely influential. Um, also, I guess uh, uh, Leonardo da Vinci has been pretty... Uh, I, like, I like a lot of his kind of uh, philosophy and his work and, um, yeah, just the way he interprets the world. Yeah. And yeah, the that's ocean, cool, 
It's fascinating. So I wrote down, I don't think I mentioned at the start, but um, I wrote down like my reference for your imagery as um, a combination of art, maths and science, like all within the same frame. And um, it's like, it's fascinating, like that that's your influence, because I think you can kind of see that. Obviously, the science is the nature, the art is how you portray it. But then there's maths in it in terms of ratios and angles and curves and that kind of thing. So um, yeah, it's fascinating. Um, yeah. Yeah. Oh, thanks heaps. That, yeah. I mean, I, it's crazy. I just told you those stories and then you just said that thing. Cause like <laughs> I didn't, yeah, that's, yeah. that's, wow. That's really cool. <laughs> yeah. Sweet. Unreal, man. This what, has been, the, look, this, you, sorry? the more simple looks and, and if it's impactful and simple, mm. you've got to look more into it because you're like, why, why yes. is this, mm. why is this pulling me in? And, yep. and then your mind will open to just limitless possibilities. Well, not limitless, actually. Very rigid, structured opportunities and possibilities. Mm. So, yeah. Uh, yeah, there's some patterns that I feel that if you scan left to right that you you take in and, uh, and that's pleasing to a yeah. person, to a human being. Yeah, and it's obviously, you, you know, you've thought about that in, especially in like the Water and Light book as well with the images being complementary to one another and it's kind of like it's not just a book of your photos it's carefully planned out and it's meant to be looked at in a certain way and that kind of thing that that's definitely true and uh my my friend gra murdoch who um he makes a magazine called white horses and he also started mm -hmm. surfing life and all of these great um surfing magazines he um designed the book and we went to some cool places <laughs> mentally as we'll put it together, just yep. melting, uh, you know, in the spine of yeah. just different uh, yeah. looks and feels. But our, our next book, third book is going to be, it's going to be another, another step in a, that direction again, I feel. Yeah. Cool. Well, cool. Well, that kind of, lead, that was going to be my next question around that. What's, what's sort of coming up? Like, what have you got planned? Is there anything, I mean, that you can, that you can talk about? Um, any like projects or um, or books I was going to mention, but yeah, so definitely working on my third book. Mm -hmm. um, I'm just gathering the images that are going to be used for that. Now we have a system where we get uh, say uh, 300 images and we give them a gold, silver, or bronze medal. And if they don't medal, they go. And then yep. we look at all of the bronzes, mm -hmm. and then we look at all the silvers, and we look at all the golds, and then we and then we start. So we're we're about to start the judging criteria of how the next book will look and feel, but we don't know, which is really cool because uh, we'll just be led by what we find because I'm just, mm. like I said, I'm just adding images to an account, a savings account, and we're yep. just going to empty that account and see what we, we come up with. So yeah. it's pretty demanding. Like yeah. it's, it's a, it's laborsome, but it's like exciting as well. Um, yeah. We just kind of lock ourselves in his house on the mid North coast and, just drink coffee and uh, eat vegetarian food and uh, go and body surf and hang out. And he's, he's a, he's a brilliant fella. And uh, yeah, I can't wait to start that process again, which I feel like it'll be in uh, around my birthday. I think we'll start kicking it off um, cool. around March. And awesome. then, yeah. The book will be ready in the second half of next year. Sweet. Thank you so much. This has just been an incredible insight. Um, I guess just to finish up, I guess like an advice question, but the, I guess the way I want to direct it now based on what we've discussed is, so there's going to be some people like watching this that are either just getting into photography, being into photography. So sometimes I'd ask for like, you know, general advice for someone getting in there, but more particular, um, someone like finding their style of photography, like if they're just starting out and they're, you know, looking to, you know, looking to find their own style, like what sort of advice would you give them I guess mindset wise like self-belief wise like to kind of you know create something for themselves i would give them the same advice that i was given by um aaron chang if you know his work yeah, he's yeah. uh old school surf photographer mm, um yeah. brilliant brilliant fellow um he said shoot what you want to see mm -hmm. not what you think other people want to see and yeah. that is one of those oh put that in here and keep on going um a very impactful quote and um that was in 2009 that he said that and i still think of that a lot and i still tell people that a lot so amazing shoot what yeah. you want to see not what you think other people want to see that's awesome because we're all unique we're all individual and our eye is individual and your superpower is being you and creating what you want to create. So, um, yeah, that's the advice I would give to anyone 
because um, you're the product of your experiences and uh, what you see is, is different to everyone else. Yeah, that's amazing, man. Thank you so much. Is there anywhere we can point people to check out your stuff? Obviously, the Fish People documentary, if anyone hasn't seen it, is amazing. Anything else that people can check out? Oh, uh, yeah, maybe just go on my website if, you, if you're that keen. It's uh, my name, Ray Collins, and then photo, P-H-O-T-O. Um, or just Google my name and uh, then just you have a look and say good day to me and write, drop me an email and I love having chats with people and yeah, yeah if um, I'm always trying to help people too so if you've got any advice or I mean if you need any advice and you think I may be able to help with it um, drop us a line and yeah. see what I can do and yeah awesome brother thank you so much this has been like a real (laughs) privilege and an honor to to get this insight um into your mind and um yeah really really stoked that you came on cheers thanks for the great questions mate i really appreciate it